There's lawnmowers outside. Sorry guys, I can't deal with it. This is the only time I can film this, so we'll just have to deal with the background noise. Hopefully you can't hear it, but it sounds loud to me. Anyway, welcome back. I have the OPI Iceland collection review for you today and comparisons as well. This is their collection for fall and winter for 2017. If you haven't seen this collection yet, I'm sure you have though. It's been popping out. There's a lot of cool tone shades and perfect shades for fall and winter and so I'm excited to share them with you. I got my polishes from polishpick.com. It's a perfect place to get OPI polish online. They're about $5.25 a bottle. Yep, that's right. Almost half the prices you can get them in the store. So it's a great place to purchase them and they have really great customer service. Service. So also just so that you're aware the prices on OPI will go up on that site August 1st I'm guessing that their prices are going to go up everywhere for OPI So um, if you see any of these that catch your eye and you want to order them Go ahead and do that before August 1st before the prices go up. Okay, let's talk about the collection I was really intrigued by this collection because I think Iceland has been getting a lot of attention lately And it's one of those places on my bucket list that I'm definitely excited to go see So let's talk about the polishes. The first one is Icelandic a bottle of OPI. It's such a great name and it's a cool toned beige but compared to some other that OPI has it's a warm tone so it's kind of a good balance of warm and cool toned. I like this one it had a good formula. I went to the store I don't have a lot of these taupey colors I just don't wear them too too often and so I wanted to see what this one compared to and I saw that the bottle of Berlin there done that was almost identical. Now, I don't know how they swatched outside of the bottle because I decided to not pay the $10 in the store for that one, or 11, but they look really, really close. So if you have that one, you might not need to pick this one up. I did pick up Topless Beach because I've been wanting that one. I think that's what it's called, right? Topless Beach. If it's not, I'll put it up here, what the correct name is, but I wanted to pick that one up. And this one's a little bit warmer than that one. So even though this is cool, it's a little bit warmer, but I'll have comparisons here to those. Let's get into the swatch. And here's the first coat of Icelandic, a bottle of OPI. As you can see, it's got a really great formula, classic for OPI. It is going to need a second coat, so this is the second coat. Dries shiny, and as you can see, it dries a little bit darker. And that's two coats of Icelandic, a bottle of OPI. And let's get into the comparisons for this. So here are the comparisons right here. I have coconuts over OPI from their spring collection and the new one I landed a bottle of OPI and then here is Topless Beach which you can see is cooler tone so they're not the same. And as I mentioned before Berlin there done that I do not have but it looks like it will be pretty close. And here are those comparisons on the nail. And the next one I have is Check Out the Old Geysers. And this is a gorgeous polish. It has a grayed out blue formula. It's really appropriate for fall, I feel. And then it has this gorgeous bright indigo, kind of purplish shimmer in it. Well, it's more of a sheen than a shimmer. It does show up on the nails under some lights. You're not gonna see it far away, but close up, you're gonna be able to see that a little bit. The base of this reminds me of Mooning by Essie that just came out from their Wild Nudes collection. But of course, that one doesn't have that shimmer. So if you like that on your skin tone, you're gonna like this one because they're pretty close. The only thing that makes this one a little different is it does show up a little bit brighter because of that shimmer and it's really pretty. It really comes to life on the nail and I was really surprised and impressed by this one and it quickly became one of my favorites. The formula is also really good on this one. It does have that more fluffy formula because it has the shimmer in it and you almost need to like uh, guide it a little bit on the nail. It's kind of interesting, but it's fine. It's easy to work with, but just keep that in mind when you use it. Let's get into the swatch for it. And here is the first coat of Check Out the Old Geysers. And you can see that sheen a little bit here. It's not showing up as much as it does in person, but I'm definitely gonna have to do a second coat. And it looks like it's fully opaque in two coats. And as I mentioned before, you just need to guide that formula around just a little bit. And that's two coats. Let's get into the comparisons for it. And here are the polishes for comparison. I have I Can Never Hut Up from the Fiji collection and then check out the old geysers, the new one here, and then Essie Mooning, and then Butter London Lady Mug, which it reminded me quite a bit of, except that has a silver shimmer and check out the old geysers has more of that blue shimmer. So definitely no dupes as far as the color goes, but definitely nothing the same just because of that sheen that it has. It makes it quite unique. And here are those comparisons on the nail. And the next one we have is I'll have a Gin and Tectonic. This is a gorgeous peachy mauve nude color. And as you know, OPI has been coming out with quite a few shades like this recently. In the last year, I want to say, at least in every collection. And it's a really nice nude. I like it. 
It's very close to Barking Up the Wrong Sequoia from the California Dreaming Collection and Excuse Me Big Sur. It's actually kind of in between those so they're not it's not exactly the same as either of those but it's very very close and it leans more towards Barking Up the Wrong Sequoia so if you have those you might not need this one. It has a great formula though. It's opaque in two coats maybe three depending on your application but I really like this one. Um, I don't think it's one of my favorites though but it's pretty. And let's get into the swatch for it. And here's the first coat of I'll have a gin and tectonic gorgeous formula. A little bit thin so I'm gonna definitely have to do two coats and I'm loving the brushes and formula with OPI. There's almost no cleanup with these and it's so so nice. And that's two coats and I think you might need three depending on your application. And that's two coats of I'll have a gin and tectonic. And let's get into the comparisons. Okay, so here is Excuse Me Big Sur, and then here we have I'll have a gin and tectonic, and then here is Barking Up the Wrong Sequoia. So you can see that those last two are pretty much almost the same, and I think I'll have a gin and tectonic is maybe a touch pinker, and you can see that on the nail here. And then we have this Isn't Greenland, I love that name, and it's this gorgeous dusty pistachio green. It's quite unique to any polishes that I have in my collection, so I was pretty surprised by that and excited by that. And I love green if you know me, so I'll wear any green polish out there. Well, maybe not any green, but classic greens. Anyway, this is really pretty, it has a fantastic formula. It is a little warmer than the others in the collection. It's still a little bit cool though, I don't know, it's kind of interesting, it's good balance. It looks good on my skin tone. I can lean more red or yellow depending on what I wear. I kind of have a neutral skin tone, so I liked this one. It's going to be very pretty in the fall, and I'm looking forward to wearing it. And it might pop up in my fall favorites. We'll have to see. And let's get into the swatch for this. And here's the first coat of This Isn't Greenland. It really has that great, great formula. And with this brush, there's almost no cleanup. I'm going to have to do a second coat. But it's fully opaque in two coats. Good formula on this one. And that's two coats. And let's get into the comparisons. Okay, so the closest one I have in my collection to this one is Zoya Ireland, and then here is This Isn't Greenland, and this is Essie Navigate Her, and then I threw in Uh Oh World Down the Window, because I thought that kind of had the same tone, but was quite a bit darker. But that just shows you how light it is. And then here they are on the nails. As you can see, Zoya Ireland is a little bit brighter and maybe a little more cool toned. So I have nothing the same as this in my collection. Next we have Aurora Berry Alice. I think that's how you say it. It's this gorgeous mauve pink. Actually it leans a little bit more berry, which I think makes it unique. I thought I'd have several colors like this. There are some that are close, but not just like this. It has a fantastic formula. I think you can get away with one coat if you want to. I always like to do two, but it has an amazing formula. It's closest to just lanaying around from the Hawaii collection, except that one has that silver shimmer. And this one doesn't have any shimmer. It's a straight up cream. I thought it would be close to the the berries that came out in the fall collection last year, the Kerry Washington collection, but it's not. There are some Essies that are a little bit close, but I'll get into those as we talk about the comparisons. I love these berry tone colors for fall, and especially ones that are a little bit dustier. And let's get into the swatch for this. And here is the first coat of Berry Alice. It's this gorgeous formula. It's opaque in one coat. I can maybe see the nail slightly, so you might want to do two. And that's one coat. And let's get into the comparisons. So here we have Just Lanaying Around, and then we have Barry Alice from this new collection, and then we have Essie Angora Cardi right here, which is quite a bit more purple and dustier, and then OPI by Popular Vote. That's from the Kerry Washington collection. I just wanted to throw that in there so you could see it. Both the Barry Tone polishes from that collection are actually darker. And here are those on the nails, and as you can see, I don't have anything the same as this polish. Next we have one Hecla of a color, and this is a cool toned, grayed out purple, and it's really pretty. It almost has a little bit of pink in there too. I love this one. In my notes I have that it dries down a little darker. A lot of these polishes dry down a little darker than in the bottom, so just pay attention to that. I thought it would be really close to Purple Palazzo Pants, but it wasn't. That one's, I think, a little more pink tone, but you'll see that coming up here soon. I love this one. It's pretty. This is actually one of my favorites from the collection as well. And let's get into the swatch. And here's the first coat of one Hecla of a color. Again, like the berry polish, this has a gorgeous formula. And I think it's opaque in one coat if it's generous. I think I did two for the photo though. 
So that's two coats of one Hecla of a color. And let's get into comparisons. Okay, so here we have it compared to Warm and Toasty Turtleneck by Essie, and then one Hecla of a color is right here. And then here is Purple Palazzo Pants, which is definitely paler, and then Lucky Lucky Lavender. So it's closest to Warm and Toasty Turtleneck, but they're not exactly the same as you'll see here on the nail. And I think I'm liking the shade of One Hecla of a Color better than Warm and Toasty Turtleneck. And then we have Less is Norse, and this is my favorite from the collection by far, I think. It's this gorgeous, it's almost a navy that's a little grayed out, well quite a bit grayed out, and then it has a little bit of purple in there as well. So against some colors it looks more purple and against others it looks more navy. I love that about polishes that they can kind of change the way they look. So I love this one. It's the one I was looking forward to the most. It completely reminded me of Essie Winning Streak, but that one's actually a little more purple and a little more grayed out. And then it reminded me of Zoya Kelly, which is a favorite of mine. Um, let's see. But I think that one's a little bit darker and a little more purple. Anyway, I love this one. It's quite unique. It does dry down darker than it does in the bottle. It's really beautiful. It's perfect for fall. And I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And let's get into the swatch for it. And here's the first coat of Less is Norse. The formula is a little bit more sheer than I expected. So I'm definitely going to have to do a second coat. The formula is nice though. And there's almost no cleanup with this formula and the brush. And here's the second coat and it covers very nicely after that second coat. I love this one. And that's two coats of Less is Norse. And let's get into the comparisons. Okay, here are the comparisons. I have Zoya Kelly, and then of course right here is Less is Norse. And then I have Bobbing for Bobbles right here, and then Winning Streak. So Less is Norse is more blue toned than Kelly, and it's definitely not as navy as Bobbing for Bobbles. So it's such a good balance of purple and blue, and I love it, it's my favorite. And Winning Streak is definitely more purple as well. And here you see those compared on the nail. And the next one we have is Reykjavik has all the hot spots. And thank you to all my Instagram friends who helped me pronounce that correctly because when I did my Insta stories, I had no idea how to say it. That's the capital of Iceland, just so you guys know that everyone let me know that. And it does have some hot spots there. I definitely want to go to Iceland someday. So this is a gorgeous grayed out purpley pink shimmery metallic polish. Now a lot of companies have been coming out with polishes similar to this one. This one's a little more toned down than like Essie's Cebu Play or um, I think it's, is it Nothing Else Metals? It's the other one that's a little pink toned by Essie. This one's a little more fall appropriate I think so you'll see that. It has just enough shimmer in there to help with the streaks from metallic polishes. I don't wear metallic polishes a ton just because I can't stand those streaks. And so this helps a little bit. So it's a little bit streaky, but not too much. And it's pretty. I think it'll be pretty in some nail art designs that I'll be using with some of these fall colors. And let's get into the swatch for it. And here is the first coat of this one. It is a little bit streaky just because of the metallic nature of this polish and a little more sheer than I expected. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a second coat and I think that has pretty good coverage. Now that glitter does help a little bit with the streaking but you're still gonna see a little bit of that. You might have to do three coats. And that's two coats of Reykjavik has all the hot spots. And let's get into the comparisons. So this polish is unique. These are the closest I can find. This is Cebu Play and here is Reykjavik has all the hot spots and nothing else metals. So Reykjavik does not have that bright silver quality that the others do. They are along the same color line, but I feel like OPI's is more appropriate for fall. And here you see them compared on the nail. And the next one we have is Susie and the Arctic Fox. Again, this is a cool toned grayed out purple. It has some blue in it as well, but it's not as blue as Less is Norse. But you can see they are a little bit different. I like them both. I think I like Less is Norse. I think I cannot say that. I think I like Less is Norse a little bit more, um, but this one does dry down darker as well, just as some of the other ones, and it's so rich and beautiful. The richness surprised me because it's a little grayed out. It's so, so pretty. I don't think there's anything close to it in OPI's line. I really thought all these polishes would have some that are similar. As I was laying them all out, I thought, oh, there's quite a few that are similar, but they're really not dupes. So let's get into this watch. And here's the first coat of Susie and the Arctic Fox. It looks like it has a very similar formula to Less is Norse, and it's a little bit sheer, so I'm gonna go ahead and do two coats. Again, hardly any cleanup, which is so great. I love this formula a lot, and it's opaque in two coats. This one also does dry down a little darker as well, and that's two coats of Susie and the Arctic Fox. 
and let's get into the comparisons. So the first polish we have here is Miss Universe, and that was the closest. This is Susie and the Arctic Fox. And then here we have Smoke and Hot, which is definitely more grayed out and more purple, and then less is Norse, so you guys could see that comparison as well. So there's no dupes that I have for this. Miss Universe is a little bit closer because this one does dry down a little bit darker. And so that was the closest, but it's definitely a more inky and not grayed out color. So they're definitely not the same. And here they are together on the nails. And the next one I have is Chronological Order, and this is a cool tone gray. It actually is a good balance between a gray and a brown. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be exactly like some of my favorites. But this one was not a dupe for any of those. It was different, it was unique, it was more cool toned than How Great Is Your Day, that's what it is. So it was cool toned compared to that one. Now, the other one that they have here in the collection is That's What Friends Are Thor, and that's the next one. And this one is a little more brown toned, as you can see as I put these together. Um, one's more cool toned and one's more brown toned. So they are different and they do both dry down a little bit darker. So this one is a little more warm toned, although it still is cool. It does just have like a touch of red, I think, in it, which is really pretty. And compared to my warm toned browns, it was a little more red. So I really liked it a lot and I love the name on this one. I'm going to do comparisons of them together. Um, side by side so you can see and then I'll have comparisons um, with them with other browns that I have because OPI does have quite a few browns but I love brown polish especially in the fall it's one of my favorite colors to wear on the nails okay so let's get into the swatch for chronological order and here's the first swatch of chronological order it has a gorgeous formula it's this mousy cool tone brown and it is going to need a second coat so I'm going to go ahead and do that here the formula is really amazing you guys typical of OPI and that's fully opaque in two coats. And that's two coats of chronological order. And then let's get into the comparisons for this one. So here we have Sh It's Top Secret, and then we have Chronological Order here, the new one. And this is How Great Is Your Dane. And then I wanted you to compare it to the other brown in the collection, which is That's What Friends Are Thor. So I really thought this would be a dupe for How Great Is Your Dane, but How Great Is Your Dane is definitely more brown and the other one, Chronological Order, has more purple. There's no dupes in here. I thought they were all going to be exactly the same, but here they are on the nail. You can also see the touch of red that's in That's What Friends Are Thor. And let's get into the swatch of That's What Friends Are Thor. And here's the first coat of That's What Friends Are Thor. I'm falling in love with this polish even more as I watch this swatch back. It's just so pretty. I love that little bit of red in it. It's the same formula as the other brown. I'm going to go ahead and do two coats. Great, great formula. Really smooth and shiny. And that's two coats of That's What Friends Are Thor. And then let's get into the comparisons for that one as well. So here it is compared to some really popular OPI browns. Here we have You Don't Know Jacques. And then That's What Friends Are Thor. And then we have Squeaker of the House, which was released last year in the fall collection. And Essie Mink Muffs. So what I love about That's What Friends Are Thor, it's got a little bit of red in it, which really sets it apart from these popular browns. And I think this might be my favorite compared to those other ones, especially for fall. And here they are on the nails. And the last one we have is the one I think that most people are probably going to be most excited about just because it's pretty unique and pretty fun. It's called Turn On The Northern Lights and it's a perfect polish for that. It's really an inky, inky blue with that gorgeous, it's got like a purple and a green kind of iridescent pink and purple and when you put it on you think it'd be more blue but it actually is a little more purple. It's a little bit thinner than I thought it would be which surprised me so you might need two to three coats depending on how rich you want your color to be but it was fully opaque in two but you might get a little more rich color if you do three coats. This one is really pretty. I compared it to Russian Navy and it was a little closer than I thought and on the nail they're actually quite different. That one is definitely more and more of an inky rich blue than this one, the base of it. I did notice with some of these darker colors that they might have a potential to stain just because they're so rich in color. So just make sure you're wearing a base coat with those and then use a really good nail polish remover. And let's get into the swatch for this one. So here's the first coat of Turn On The Northern Lights. And as you can see, and I mentioned before that it's a little more sheer than I thought it would be. So I'm definitely gonna need at least two coats. I'm gonna do the second coat here. You can see that lovely shimmer. It really does show up quite a bit and gives it a nice, gorgeous purple sheen. And I stopped at two coats. That's two coats of Turn On The Northern Lights. 
And let's get into the comparisons. So these are the few polishes that I have are the closest. This is OPI Give Me Space, and here is Turn On The Northern Lights. And then here is Russian Navy. As you can see in the bottle, they look kind of close, Russian Navy, but on the nail, they are not the same at all. Okay, so let's talk about my favorites. Let me think here. I think I would pick this blue, and I don't normally pick blues, but I do love these dusty blues because it just was so unique and pretty on the nail, especially with that um, shimmer running through it. This green, for sure. Oh, God, it's always so hard for me to pick these. I think I love the cool tone brown the most. So, and then this berry and the purple. So, oh, and less is Norse. <laughs> you guys, I it's so hard for me to pick favorites because I just fall in love with polishes too fast. Okay, so one heck of a color. Um, Aurora Berealis, less is Norse. Um, this isn't Greenland, chronological order, and check out the old geysers. I always have too many favorites. Oh, it's gonna be hard to pick my fall favorites. I'm excited for the Essie fall collection too, so hopefully that should be coming soon. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Give me a thumbs up if you did. It really helps me out and it helps me know if I really need to keep doing these comparisons. And then let me know what colors you might pick up and definitely check out polishpick.com. I do wanna see what polishes you were your favorites and let's have a little polish discussion in the comments below. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.